Good morning, Nigeria. Welcome to Daybreak, reaching you live from the nation's capital. I'm Zainab Bala. I am Sunday, Michael. Good. Thanks for staying with us. Our headlines for you this morning. Nye killed many missing in Iswap attack on Chibok. Jonathan remembers late president 12 years after. Adama police arrest 14 robbery suspects, recover items. Now the news in details. No fewer than nine villagers have been killed in a military base set ablaze when Islamic states of uh, West Africa province ISWAP fighters attacked Kati Kari village in Chibok local government area of Borno state. It was gathered that the insurgents stormed the village in their large numbers at about 7 p.m. on Tuesday and opened fire on the people. A member of the civilian John Tax Force said, we have recognized it, we have recovered eight bodies from the scene of yesterday's attack on our village. Many are still unaccounted for as they are missing. The military here has been, the military base has been burned down and some residential homes equally touched. Former President Goodluck Jonathan has described his predecessor, late Umar Musa Ir Adwa, as a selfless leader and a peacemaker. Jonathan said this in a tribute shared on his social media account on Thursday titled President Ir Adwa, 12 years after. After Ir Adwa's death, his deputy, Goodluck Jonathan, mounted the saddle to complete his four years, after which he did another one term for the South South Zone. Jonathan, in the tribute, said the late former president was a servant leader and a good man who is hard to find. The Adama State Police Command has arrested 14 notorious criminals terrorizing residents of Yola North and Yola South local government areas of the state. The police in Adama are following its sustained efforts to rid the state of crime and improve public safety, buzz the activities of the crime syndicate, which also led to the recovery of one Audi vehicle, six computer sets, two television sets, hard drugs, among others. The suspects during their interrogation confessed to committing offenses which range from house to house robbery within Yola North and Yola South local government areas, as well as the rustling of 34 cows, among others. The new commissioner of police in Adamawa State, Sikiru Akande, had while resuming his duty post pledged to rid the state of criminal elements. On Thursday in Yola, while parading the criminals, Akande again assured of the readiness of personnel of the force of sustaining the efforts by the command to rid the state of criminal elements. Well, that is that. Now to kickstart our first discussion uh, on the program. The Central Bank of Nigeria in February 2021 barred local banks from working with cryptocurrencies and also threatened severe regulatory sanctions and freezing accounts of firms found to be using them. However, Nigeria remains one of the leading countries in the world when it comes to crypto adoption. This may be related to the fact that although the Central Bank of Nigeria released a statement that appeared to be a ban on the use of Bitcoin as well as other digital assets in the country, Nigeria doesn't have a law that governs cryptocurrency yet. Experts are, however, describing the situation as a prime example of how people turn to crypto to cope with a struggling economy despite the prohibitive stance of the state. Now to discuss this, uh, we have in the studio Jafet Johnson, a cryptocurrency expert and chief technology officer of Becontel Wallet. Is that it? Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the program. All right, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you in the studio. I was joking uh, when you come in earlier, I said I hope you came with our own uh, with our own uh, souvenirs of, of Bitcoin so that we can also migrate from uh, <laughs> from this space to that space where uh, a lot of people seem to be uh, taking soccer. Yes. For the understanding of the basic person at home, what exactly is this Bitcoin? Okay, so uh, thank you very much for having me. It's awesome being on a platform like this and on it entirely. All right, so... Um, a Bitcoin is a digital asset and built on the blockchain. So a Bitcoin is just a first use case that has to do with finance, has to do with cross-border payments that is built on the blockchain. Mm. Now, it's digital to ensure uh, users will be able to move funds from one country to another, and it's open for everyone to verify and see the transparency between those transactions. So that's why the blockchain incorporated um, the aspect of open ledger, um, security, speed, and reliability. 
and Bitcoin is the first use case which has to do with the financial aspect. So the blockchain is able to adopt a lot beyond Bitcoin. It can also handle a lot of um, data management systems. It can do with record systems. So the blockchain is huge, but Bitcoin is just an aspect that has to do with the finance. So if, if it is what it say it is, the speed, cross-border payments, and all the positive that I seem to offer, why do we get a sense that regulators in Nigeria are not comfortable with the whole idea of a Bitcoin? Okay, uh, we have to understand this. Um, every new technology comes with challenges. And there are always three set of people that always jump into new technology. Those ones that go for the love of technology and research. The second one are people that want to go to get in money from those technology. And the third one is the bad perpetrators that want to use that technology to either harm the society or people that are using it. Mm. Okay, so I want to explain this. We need to understand. A technology is never bad, but the use cases can be bad at times. So we can have, just like the way when Yahoo came, it was used for sending messages, but other people started using Yahoo to scam a lot of foreigners and we turned it to Yahoo Yahoo. Mm. So Yahoo was never a bad technology, mm. right? But there's a use case that comes into it that makes it look bad. So it's the same thing with blockchain. Blockchain technology is something that will solve a lot of problems for the country, which we have already started seeing a lot of use cases in other countries. But what we have people that are always jumping into it to ensure that they can what, move funds, um, do money laundering with it, try to fund some kind of payments that are illegal and all those. So that's why the regulators are beginning to say, okay, this is bad. Now, the only reason why we feel it's not supposed to be like that is a country where we are the top, as of yesterday, Nigeria became number one in crypto adoption. We we're told, but we became number one. And a country like this, where we have teaming youths that want to actually go in to get investment vehicles that will help them go to build their money and at least get profit quickly, should not be so strict with the issue of band, but we should look at how can regulation come into place. Okay? Now, an average Nigerian youth wakes up in the morning and the first thing he sees is Bitcoin, believe me. The second thing he sees is possibly Binance, FTX, or any crypto exchange. An average Nigerian youth doesn't wake up to hear, okay, you can buy Dangote shares. He doesn't go to NT and see you can buy MTN shares. You understand? We don't have those education on place. So where should we invest? When over 90% of businesses in Nigeria die within the first four years of their existence. It's dangerous. Last two weeks, a lady was saying she bought a share from one of the banks. I won't mention her, the name. Since 2017, 2007, for 22,000 Naira. As of last month, the shares of 22,000 Naira is just worth 20,000 Naira. Okay. I think another you know, negative aspect you know, of uh, the whole issue around Bitcoin is its instability. That what, that's one negative aspect of it because uh, a lot of people say the market fluctuates because it's dynamic, sometimes it goes up, sometimes it crashes down. So in that aspect, how can one actually relate to wanting to invest in Bitcoin? Exactly. So that's where the knowledge of trading comes into place. You see, um, Netflix crashed just last two weeks. For the first time, I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> Okay, people crashed. Nasdaq crashed. So when we are talking about the volatility, every stock can be volatile. It's just a matter of one new law, an information, a news, or something that comes up, mm. and it just disrupts the entire market. So when we say volatility, we should not look at volatility as a part of cryptocurrencies alone. Even the normal Nigerian stock is. Tomorrow, if a law just comes up, down with shares can drop. Facebook shares can drop, and people will lose money. Okay, so it's left for us to have platforms that teaches people about the education part of how can you trade, when to push stop laws, how do you follow news, how do you follow information, how do you follow companies to know what's the current. When we are informed, I think we will be able to take better decisions. Okay. Now, back in 2021, with the banning of, you know, uh, cryptocurrencies, we saw the introduction of e-Naira. Does the e-Naira and cryptocurrencies have any relationship? Are they the same thing? Yes, yeah, so um, the CBDCs, I totally agree with the concept because we always live in a, in a world where 
decisions we want to be centralized by the government mm. and CBDCs are going to actually help. But I think um, the approach that our own era is taking is somehow slow. Um, China, two weeks ago, it dropped, I think it's 150 yen to every China that will be able to, China citizen that will register on their CBDC platform. So it's good. Imagine every Nigerian will be able to have for registering your inera, you are going to have a particular airdrop of inera to your wallet. We'll start with that, then come up with education platforms that will teach people about this particular inera. Because since then, have you heard about inera again? We have not heard about inera on TV. We have not heard CBN talk about inera again. It's like, is it, the, is it that the project is stalled or it's not going anywhere further? So we are looking at the inera to be able to come as a funding channel between the forex market and even the crypto market. So the, the government should be able to say, okay, Inera is a stable coin now. We should be able to integrate with the forex market. We should be able to connect with and the cryptocurrency market, so that I can use my Inera to fund if I do trading, and I also remove my money. So when we start to use or build use cases for the Inera, those people that are knowledgeable enough will start using it. Then for the poor masses, we should be able to have platform like this will be very good to have expert come talk about Inera and see how we we'll adopt it. So it's a very good. That uh, idea I will see from you. Mm. Just uh, listening to you and drawing from the comments you made, you you talked about not sufficient education available in the space, and I'm wondering where did the education for for the Bitcoin usage came from? Uh, where the conventional uh, stock market education has failed? How, how were these young people able to jump on this education and get as much uh, and become number one? In fact, in terms of onboarding. Uh, where did they find that information? Because it does appear that there is both scarcity on, on both sides of information. Why are they jumping on this one as against uh, searching for information that they have to invest on the stock market? Okay, um, it's true. <coughs> uh, we have to look at how digitization has really grown. Um, as I've said, an average Nigerian spends more than seven to eight hours on his phone. Mm. And so many platforms are trying to bring investment vehicles that a vehicle just to take you from one place to another. So an investment vehicle is supposed to take you from one place to another. And you always want to take a Bugatti than taking the Toyota, OK? So we are in a digital age where I'd rather take a very fast vehicle that takes me to my destination and taking something that is very slow. So and people are becoming a little bit um, financially illiterate. So I'll be able to differentiate between this one and this one, which one will take me fast. So when I go to social media and I'll go online, companies that are providing speed vehicles are always there. They are always ready to teach you that, OK, with your 10,000 error, you can actually speed up with this knowledge to make it 10,000, 20,000. While you know on a conventional business, for you to convert 20,000 to 30,000 error is going to be a little bit difficult. So there is a lot of platforms that are pushing that. I think um, the cryptocurrency space is very, very fast. It spins very fast due to volatility. And a lot of people were able to go in, make money very fast. So it's easy to tell person, why I put 10,000 and I make 20,000. So that continues to grow very fast. There is a rapid information distribution using that digital media. Um, so. So one will begin to get worried. You have spoken to this as something very noble, as something that seemed to have provided uh, quite a number of alternatives for our team in unemployed, unemployed youth. Not just the unemployed, it does appear that people like you who are also sophisticated are playing in that space. So what do you think needs to happen between where the CBN currently stands with that whole ban and restriction? and where you begin to see some kind of regulatory cooperation. I, I know the Security and Stage Commission sometimes ago said they set up a, a sandbox <coughs> where people can come and test some of the things they are working on, let them see it and understand it. What needs to happen? Is it you trying to get to the CBN and get them to understand what happens and then frame a regulation around it? Or where do we, do we need to see a handshake right now? OK, uh, so the, the CBN who are always saying they are looking into it, they are studying um, the blockchain and cryptocurrencies to understand it. But we're in a fast dynamic um, economy, and things need to be taken a little bit faster. Um, so many countries, 
are not really shouting on the ban per se, mm -hmm. but are trying to put frameworks and working with industries to see how they will come up with. Um, so like currently now, uh, you will not be able to steal phones on crypto because that's what the belief have been that if I steal phones, I'll be able to move it. But currently, they already have a database that will be able to lock your wallet. So anytime you are using that wallet, stolen phones, to move to another exchange to cash out, it will be blocked. So Nigerian CBN should be able to work with homegrown industry or homegrown companies to be able to come up with a framework. We should not wait until when those other countries have built their own softwares and everything, then we'll adopt it. So there should be a connection with, I think, the industries, the regulatory, and the institution. Because when these three people come into play, that we have the institution to play as key researchers. We have the CBN to come up as a key regulator. And the industry should be those people that will be able to implement those regulations. I think we'll be able to build a very viable uh, system. OK. Now, before we go, um, cryptocurrency enthusiasts believe that uh, the use of cryptocurrencies can help stabilize a struggling economy. Now, to a layman, could you just <coughs> explain how that could actually happen? Okay, the layman will already believe um, whatever we're doing, the government is making from it, and that's what the government is using to make our lives better. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, in a nutshell, is the economy will always thrive when we are producing. If we don't produce, we keep losing money. So Nigeria is not really a producing nation, per se. Mm. And we should always see a reason why we should tap into the creativity of what is coming. Because we have a lot of teaming youth that are working so hard on this space. Mm -hmm. So rather than banning, we should see how can we make their day-to-day -day business better, and we should be able to actually get tax from it. I feel that's where the government should be able to. When you put up these regulations, you have more business coming up, and definitely, the government will have money from them because if these people are transacting, are building softwares, we're exporting great mines out of the country now. So the, definitely the government will make from it and it will increase to our mm. uh, GDP. Quickly, uh, before we wrap up, you said we have become number one. What does this mean in terms of number, in terms of volume, and what comes in or goes out of this country? So what goes <coughs> into the government is practically less than 5%, if, if there is, because you can't actually transact with banks now. Mm. So we have a lot of adoption. Mm. It's not Nigeria per se, but Nigerians mm. have made the number become number one mm. because we have a lot of youths using NFTs, making money from NFTs, um, going to different platforms to buy their tokens. So we just have widespread. It's so funny when we talk about education, it's low in the country, but how do we get to this point that cryptocurrency has gone to the normal guy in the street understanding it? So. It's so, it's tell how Nigerians are so keen to learn when it comes to their finances. Hmm. Really very interesting. All Indeed. Of these terminologies sound really <laughs> technical, but... I'm sure you and I will have to enroll behind Japheth yeah. outside the studios <laughs> so that we will not be left behind. Uh, when Japheth uh, seems to be doing those international transactions, <laughs> we would have something to cash in or cash out out of. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking with uh, Japheth Johnson, a cryptocurrency expert and chief technology officer of Bitcointa Wallet. Uh, we hope to see you again in the studio. I'm sure this will be a continuous conversation yeah, until we we'll get so to a point. Thank yeah, uh, it's been quite educative. Thank you for no. coming on the studio. We will take a short breather. When we return, the show continues. Thank you very much. Okay.